Joining me now to discuss Alphabet's AI strategy and where it stacks up compared to its mega cap peers, we want to welcome in Stephen Dickens, CEO and Principal Analyst at Hyperframe Research. Stephen, it is good to see you. Haven't talked in a little while. Always interested in your perspective in this sector. So it's been a tough week for the AI trade and these big uh, mega cap uh, names. Uh, Alphabet Google under some pressure this morning. Now you point out that you say that there's this relentless focus at Google on this. AI AI is the core compute product and enterprise security layer. Um, but now there are all these questions around this um, and the valuations there. What are you paying attention to with regard to Alphabet's AI strategy? Hey, Diane, happy Friday. So there's a few fundamentals here for me. After some false starts, Google's really, really focused in. So they've recently announced what they've been doing with their new Ironwood TPU. This is the seventh generation of their own in-house silicon. They're also partnering with ARM for their Axiom CPU. So this is a company that's investing deep in the technology, deep in the semiconductor space to be able to own the stack top to bottom. So they, they're saying that's improving performance. We're seeing a lot of the in-house um, AI trained on TPU. They've got a strong partnership with NVIDIA, obviously, but their in-house capability. We've also got to remember that there's a lot of AI built across some of the consumer presence within it, within uh, Google. So what we're seeing with YouTube, YouTube with uh, Gmail, so all those kind of public facing presences as well, we're also seeing them build off that deep base of innovation to provide AI throughout the stack. To guide AI throughout the stack, when you talk about controlling the whole stack or owning the whole system, for people who are watching this stock, what's the advantage of doing everything in-house versus, say, partnerships? Yes, yeah, so if you compare this, Diane, to what, say, Microsoft are doing or what AWS are doing with its partnership with Anthropic, Microsoft partnering with OpenAI, Google's taking a different strategy. What it's doing is looking to control that from, as I mentioned, the Ironwood GPU and the Axiom CPU right through to Gemini, its, its um, universal intelligence layer, so its own in-house large language model. That's a frontier model that can compete with anything that we're seeing from OpenAI, Llama, some of those other Anthropic with Claude. So it's competing at, at that sort of frontier model from an innovation point of view. And then they take that further. I just recently switched my phone to go from Apple to, to Android on a new Pixel phone. So because of what they're doing with regard to AI. So this control up and down the stack. So everything from the interface and Chrome, there's a big Chrome event this past week. So they're bringing innovation at the browser, they're bringing it at the device, they're bringing it at the large language model, they're taking that right through their enterprise suite of, G of applications. We're going to see it in YouTube, we're going to see it in the Google workspace. That level of innovation and doing it in-house enables Google to tune it at every layer of the stack, Diane. It's interesting to see that you switched. Uh, one of my sisters used to have a previous model of the Pixel, which it did. So I will say this, and I know this is going to sound very basic. It took nice pictures, but I think she had, you know, I, I don't know if there were just challenges with the functionality at the time. And so maybe the new Pixel is a better place, especially given we are now in an AI ecosystem. So when you talk about, you know, uh, Gemini everywhere, for instance, uh, I'm seeing that Gemini is supposed to be act as like this personal or business assistant, how realistic is that? So over here at Hyperframe Research, we've st standardized on Google products from the workspace perspective. We're using the, the um, AI on a daily basis to infuse what we do in our tasks. It's a fantastic work. Uh, research tool. So we're using some of the deep research capabilities. We were using the workbook LLM. Our team has a weekly call. In fact, the calls in an hour's time to share best practices and what we're seeing as we look to leverage this technology. It's a fast moving space. We've got a number of our analysts focused on it. So I think it's the, what we're seeing is this agentic shift. We're going from the chatbots that were the first round of where we were. We saw that with OpenAI when they broke into the market a couple of years ago. We're now seeing this move to an agentic shift. And I think with this tight level of integration, 
up and down the stack. That's where I see there's a real strong growth for for Google going forward. And and there's other things that they're doing in their portfolio. I'm just po- talking about what they're doing from AI. We've got Waymo with autonomous vehicles and, and robo-taxis. So there's a whole breadth of what Google's doing and where it can bring this core innovation across AI to bear. How do you interpret the spending, uh, right? Uh, Google pouring billions into a data center build out, you know, being at the forefront of AI and AI infrastructure. But there's this question that we've gone back and forth, whether it's Alphabet, Google, Meta, et cetera, on if it's risky spending or if it's, you need to, you know, spin big to, you know, make big to stay ahead, essentially. How do you interpret that or how should investors interpret that spending? So we, we saw in the latest earnings, Diane, that the cloud backlogs one hundred and fifty five billion. That's up eighty two percent jump year over year. So the company's got that strong backlog. Google's got a fantastic balance sheet, very well run company over the last couple of decades. So the ability for them to take maybe a more capex heavy investment strategy over the prevailing quarters, I think makes sense. As as Mark Zuckerberg has said and has said repeatedly, this is an existential threat to these large mega cap businesses. The threat of under investing is worse than the threat of over investing by a few billion. Crazy to say, I know, but I, I compare that to where Apple are with their lack of investment. I think I'd be taking the Google strategy here and be doubling down and making those bets and going all in. This is a chance when we're disrupting the entire stack. As I say, I've switched phones because of AI from Google. I think a lot of enterprises are going to be evaluating cloud providers based on the ability to bring AI to bear and enterprises to also just generally about how they make choices around some of their productivity tools. So I think Google's wise to be investing. And I think, yes, we've got to be tracking that in the quarterly earnings and be laser focused on some of those CapEx investments. But I think over investing is the strategy here rather than under investing, Diane. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. That is Stephen Dickens, CEO and principal analyst at Hyperframe Research. Always great perspective.